Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection of Research Association. Uh, this week, uh, or th th this vid, we're just doing a quick book review of a book that's recently arrived in the collection, German Machine Guns, Development Tactics and Use from 1892 to 1918. Uh, you know, normally we stay clear of this kind of thing actually because there's so many books on so many different weapons that you know, we're not a general firearms collection as I'm sure you're aware if you're watching this vid um, but we needed to understand German machine guns in this period really uh, well uh, and the Second World War too in terms of how they differed from the Vickers. So this book seemed to be a great high production quality um, book that we haven't looked at yet so this is our first look as much as it is the video. Uh, it's not gonna be a book review, it really is a first look. So I thought we'd just share that with you as we flick through it. Um, yeah, let, let's get that, there we go. Uh, so, you know, nice, nice hardback book. M massive, um, you know, it, as they go. Very similar in production quality to the kind of um, collector grade publications uh, that we're used to seeing. And perhaps it's a good sort of successor or specialist successor to um, the Devil's Paintbrush. I don't know. Um, you know that will have to wait, I think, for, um, uh, for, for a full review, perhaps, if it's of interest. So what does it cover? German machine gun troops, it's German standard machine guns being the 08, the 0815 and the 0818. Um, machine guns in the air, okay, interesting, um, certainly from a Vickers Mark I star perspective, how they compare. The exotics, um, what have we got? Uh, the Lichter MG15, so the light light gun MG15 there, the Drays, and the Madsen Rexa, so uh, something that actually appears in British service a little bit as well. Uh, maybe they do f feature... Um, uh, some Vickers machine guns. We'll see captured machine guns there, and there are loads of stuff on accessories. And this is this this is really good. So so indirect firing. I don't understand how the MG08 was used in indirect fire. I'd love to understand that a little bit more. So machine uh, um, comparison straight in this too. So yeah, we're out to five hundred and thirteen pages um, on the on the uh, on the contents there. Uh, you know, certainly looks promising. I'm not going to uh, go through every page because there are 513 of them, um, but I'll flick through and, and just have a look. So, you know, development, patents, uh, some earlier stuff there, some Gatling uh, material, very famous photo of Maxim, uh, some MG01 there, uh, made by uh, Deutsche Waffen manufacturer 1907, um, very similar to British, uh, very, very similar to the British stuff. Uh, let's flick through. Production and procurement, great. This will this help me understand the capability, what German machine guns were doing when. So we've got some production dates there running from October 16 to September 17. How was their um, machine gun production compared to ours? Obviously, we'd play MG08 with Vickers, 0815 with um, Lewis, you know, and, then, and then the other machine guns that are in service as well. So... Um, yeah, some aircraft guns, perhaps super. Yeah, this this this, this is looking really promising. Uh, as I said, the, the the quality of this and the material is superb. So very very pleased. Um, you know, I can't comment on the accuracy of the information in it without reading it, but I certainly think this looks worth the money um, for it as a, as a high end book. Uh, so, okay, so it's going to get into some of the uniforms and equipment of machine gun troops too. Um, that's quite nice. Um, you know, possibly not necessarily relevant to what we want. Um, hopefully it's not too much of that. Uh, and it gets, oh, okay, so I recognise some of these drag straps. Um, what's that? We've got flare pistol there. Yeah, interesting. It'd be interesting to see how the equipment uh, compares with what a Vickers machine gun section uh, had at the same time as well. It's a photo I do recognise. So perhaps it's using some recognisable photos. It's nice that it's English language for a start. You know, it it, it means that I don't have to, to sit and remember, uh, remember German um, and brush up on German. So lots of detail there. Um, Lots of detail on the sledge mounts, oh, 0815. So I'm familiar with the 0815 a little bit. Um, you know, handled a few of them. Nice nice to see those. Uh, I, so a, se a skeletonized version or sectioned or cutaway, whichever flavor you have. Uh, what's this? This uh, Mondragon. Oh, okay, the self-loading carbine Mondragon rifles um, used by the German Air Force. That's quite cool. I think we trial these um, in the small arms committee minutes in the 1900s. So that's interesting. 
yeah, this the technical stuff's great. Technical stuff is sort of uh, available in Devil's Paintbrush, um, but you know, it, it, this is clearly uh, uh, you know, got have recent photography done and certainly very high quality photography. So we're now into the into the Dreys, the exotics as they as they put it, um, Dreys and the Madsen Rex. Uh, that's quite cool. Um, yeah, big. Uh, you know, there's quite a lot of Madsons around the collector's market, but I think they're sort of an undervalued weapon. Uh, tank and Flieger Abwehr, machine and Gewehr. So, you know, anti-tank and anti-aircraft machine gun, anti-tank machine gun, interesting. Um, hmm, it could be used in an tank roll, okay. Uh, I think that just means it was used in the tank, doesn't it? Who knows, we'll have to read it. Um, let's not get stuck into to reading it too much. What have we got? Russian M1910, so this is the captured stuff. So captured machine guns, yeah, features the Vickers. Um, got a Lewis in there, and there's a normal Maxim in there. I'm not gonna, you know, so this is obviously taken out of captured machine gun manual. Well, I'd love to see a copy of that at some point. Um, Hotchkiss, uh, Belgian Maxim model 1911. This is yeah really extensive. Oh, but that's a that's a um, an image we recognise out of so many of our uh, manuals. Um, so great Vickers machine gun. Um, those are those are in British service actually. Those so we've got no photos of the Vickers uh, in captured service. That's a shame. Um, I'd like to have seen that, but whatever. Yeah, we, we recognise that photo there. That photo is very famous because um, it appears in so many things, normally uh, wrongly captioned, but it's in reverse because the fusy spring is not on the right-hand side. Uh, Lewis, we well know about the Lewis being used in um, in uh, German service. Yeah, it's quite, quite popular. Uh, let's skip past technical problems and developments. Okay, some developments on the accessories, super, armor, uh, and then let's say the accessories that we used. Some of these are, uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, I've seen that, seen that uh, in a few things. Um, oh, and then we got toolkits, super. Yeah, everybody loves a, a toolkit. Uh, what, what is it I want out of this book? I, oh, hand carts, okay, interesting. I want tactical use, I want to understand um how these guns were being used uh interesting i think that's the top part of a sangster mount yes of, of the auxiliary mounts so they say improvised for the mg08 because it would have fitted um but that's yeah that's the the british auxiliary mount oh how were they used come on yeah give me some tactics give me some doctrine that's what I want to be learning from. Um, nice to see the sights though. Uh, we'll share more on some of that because we have a ZF-12 in the collection um, here uh, that fits onto our Nepalese gun. Uh, ammunition, yeah, ammunition. These these boxes quite um, quite often appear as a, a what are they? So hopefully this will explain that a little bit more. Um, more more things ammunition feed ammunition indirect fire okay so this is going to give me um possibly the information that i need um and it seems to indicate the British Army began using its Vickers machine gun to indirect fire, similar to the artillery, very early on. It therefore was not long before the German side began undertaking experiments in 1916 to also use heavy machine guns for this type of fire. Okay, that answers one of the questions. Who did it first? Uh, that's brilliant to be able to see. Um, you know, uh, it seems we did it first. They followed. I sort of had that inkling, uh, but I hadn't seen it written from this perspective before. Uh, and then we've got some comparisons. Okay, I'm not sure how much... Yeah, this is organizations of the division. Maybe it tells you where um, machine guns end up. Yep, divisional machine gun companies, machine gun battalion mentioned for the British, the French. That'll be useful to understand as well. Um, although we have just bought a, a book on French uh, organization. Uh, and then the end of the war, the adoption of machine guns by the Freikorps. So yeah, uh, I so come to the end of the book, um, the Reichswehr, as I come to the end of it, I say end of it, 475, a bit more. Um, there, it's interesting to see that it does seem to cover. Um, oh look, they, they they can't help themselves, can they? These people, um, you know, get into a bit of uh, submachine gun action in, in a machine gun book. Uh, always interesting to see. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it's like there's there's a place for these things. Uh, tell me the relationship. Anyway, nice big reference section. Super um, nice to nice to see that there. Uh, what can I see? Are there any? Yeah, Dolph Goldsmith's books, um, Devil's Paintbrush and Grand Old Lady are both there. Expanded editions of the Grand Old Lady in there too. Um, 
what else we got manuals uh yeah so so they've, they've done a really good job on explaining the sources too possibly not in direct relation to where they uh where they've come from but uh great to see uh and then they've got endnotes which is always useful uh, so maybe those sources are yeah they, it does look like those sources are explained so for the academic study um you'll be able to track everything through which is really good um auctioneers and specialist dealers a few adverts up ah, okay so that shows you where to go and buy your mg 8s uh that's brilliant. Um, I'm actually really pleased with that. I think it probably is going to be worth the money for what I want. Just that better understanding of the MG08 and how it was used. So I hope that fly through is really quite useful for you. Useful for me um, to understand what I'm looking at. This will go, probably go on the shelf now for a while. But we are right, having to write a section on German machine guns and their use for the Machine Gun Corps History Project. So uh, some stuff about American use as well So and French. So this will be helpful um, and you know, help us put that chapter together with the other sources that we have available. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.